So tell me, is this one of your favorite places to come for hot penny stock information? I hope so. If not, I'll try to make it so. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And this is Tuesday. It's August 27th. Now we're going to do what we always do. We're going to focus in on a hot penny stock that I came across as I was trading penny stocks. Do this every day from bell to bell. I'm looking for stocks that are under five bucks. And you know where I find them? Anywhere, everywhere. They're on every single market. No lack of penny stocks. And I'm looking for a hot penny stock. A penny stock that has potential to make us money. And when I'm looking for hot penny stocks, I am not going through the filings. I am not looking at press releases. That's way too time consuming. And even after I read it, Ultimately, I got to go look at the chart to see if it's worth investing in. Why? Because the chart matters. Actually, the chart is what it's all about. So I just start with the charts. I find a chart that has heat, that looks like it's ready to break out, that's been on a strong run or got big bounces. Find a chart that has heat, then go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings for that company. Look for any news in the last 30 days. A hot chart doesn't need a big piece of news. It doesn't even need fresh news. It just needs news with substance, news that's still in play, and that chart can get running. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you on a regular basis. So I'm going to continue that by looking at ticker ICON today. We're looking at Icon Energy Core. I thought this company was around for a long time. That ticker looks very familiar to me, but they just came on the market at the beginning of July. So Icon Energy, her chart, it was depressed since she came on. She came on at three bucks, it fell down to about two bucks, and right now she is climbing. And all the charts look good to me. The four hour, the one hour, the 30 minute, the 15 minute, the five minute, they all look good to me. And we got lots of good news over here. I'm not going to call them big catalysts, but we got lots of little things that are adding up to catalysts. So I think this is a good time to look at Icon. She finished today at $2.69, and she's up just under 25%. She's up more than 50 cents today. This is a hot stock on the major exchange, which means there's no transaction fees. You can trade it pre-market, after-market. Lots of opportunities there to make some big bucks. Heck, there's a lot more money and volume up on the major exchange. And folks, isn't that where you really want to be trading? Where there's money and where there's volume? And last but not least, there's a lot more rules on the major exchange. Which sounds like a bad thing, but it really is good for me and you. That protects us, keeps the companies honest, keeps our investments safe. So what is Icon Energy Core all about? Well, they tell us right here. Icon Energy Corps engages in the ocean transportation of dry bulk cargoes worldwide. And that's really it in a nutshell, folks. So let's go take a look at that chart now and... <laughs> kidding, kidding. But really, that's all you need to know about what it is they do. But we'll get more information now about what it is they're doing. Jumping on over here into the news. We've got four pieces of news, three we want to consider. One that came out July 15th, the company announced the closing of their $5 million initial public offering. The IPO'd on July 12th, came on the market, put every share they had on the market and made $5 million. Came on at three bucks. Well, divide $3 into 5 million, that's 1.5, 1.6 million shares. That's all they had when they came on the market. And that's basically all they got right now. Then August 8th, they tell us that they have acquired Commissar Max, a dry bulk carrier. This is a huge, very large ship that carries dry bulk cargo. This was made in 2007, comes from Japan. They're paying about $17.5 million for it. Now, I have no idea how many ships this company has. I haven't seen any word about that but I've got to presume they have more than one. I mean, they're making millions of dollars, right? They've been in business before they came onto the market. So they've got to have more than one. So now they've just added another one to it. Getting more information here, that last piece of news is an update. They give us lots of little tidbits of information here and all of them are good. They tell us here that Icon's board of directors has approved a cash dividend of eight cents per share 
for the second quarter of 2024. Eight cents. So that means if you've got a thousand shares, you're going to get $80 as a dividend payment. Where's that dividend payment go? Right into your brokerage account as cash. You'll just see it increase. So a thousand shares will make you $80. They tell us here that the cash dividend will be paid on September 30th for anybody who owns shares recorded by September 15th. It takes one day to record any transaction, so you're gonna to have to have your shares bought by September 14th to qualify. Now here's the neat thing. I've got a friend that actually plays dividend stocks to take short gains. <laughs> this is how he does it. We've got the two dates here that are necessary. He will buy into a stock that has a dividend coming out before the record date. He will then sell a couple days after the record date, getting all of his investment back. Then he'll go find another dividend stock to invest in and then he gets paid a dividend. Even though he doesn't own any shares of that company anymore, he's still qualified for the dividend and he gets it. Now his money's in another dividend stock. He's going to sell that as soon as he qualifies, go look for another one and then get paid a dividend from that one. And he just keeps that cycle and he's making good money doing it. And that's the trick folks. It's not how many things you can do. It's can you do one well? If you can find something you can do well and make money at, stick to that. Just keep doing that over and over and over again and you'll get wealthy. They go on to tell us they've also entered into a non-binding term sheet, a lending agreement with an international financial institution. They are going to be getting basically two loans that add up to $91 million. The first one is for $16 million. This is going to help them pay off that ship that they're buying for $17.5 million. The second one is for $75 million, and this is just cash they can have available for when they want to buy more ships. So that's a good thing. They've got money to pay for the one they're getting, and they've got money to buy more, which means when they do, we'll have another piece of news come out. That'll be a catalyst. And then something really juicy here, earnings preview. Their financials are about ready to come out, and they're giving us a sneak peek of what they're going to be before they come out. They tell us here that revenue netted between $2.6 and $2.8 million, which is an increase of 15 to 20% compared to last year when they weren't even on the market yet. Operating profits between $0.9 million and $1.1 million. That's an increase of 42 to 50% over last year. And net income between $0.9 million and $1.1 million. That too was an increase of 40 to 45% over last year. So their revenues are growing. We've got a dividend coming out, which means we're going to get money. Now, something you'll probably want to know, if you're in it for the dividend, if you're holding the company stock, the day they give the dividend, whatever the dividend is, here it's eight cents. As soon as the bell goes off in the morning, you will see the price of the stock drop the amount of the dividend. Bink, it'll drop eight cents. That's not anybody selling. That's just everybody getting their dividend. That's where it comes from, the stock. And we see they've got lots of money to work with, paying for what they've just bought and money to buy more. So everything is looking really good here. Haven't seen anything I'm worried about. So let's take a look at the relative volume for Icon. We'll try that again. <laughs> well, we're up a little bit. She's doing about 41,000 shares a day over the last 30 days. Today, she was up a smidge to about 51, closing in on 52,000 shares. Not a lot of volume, that's for sure, especially on the major exchange. Now, this is very interesting, folks. They tell us that the outstanding share count here is 200,000 shares. What? Well, as I said, when you divide $3 into 5 million, you come up with 1.5, 1.6 million. Well, what I discovered was if I came over here and worked with the numbers they gave me here, right there. They say they're going to be given an $0.08 cent dividend for all the common shares, which will add up to $116,000. Now we've got a number. So I divided $0.08 cents into $116,000. And that gave me just a little over 1.4 million. So that's what our outstanding share count is going to be. I don't know what the insiders own. You got to subtract that because they're not on the market. That's our float. So whatever it is, it is super duper low, folks. It is just over a million. 
So we're looking really good there. Market cap, I'm not going to trust that number either. You got to take the total number of shares, which is just call it 1.5 million and multiply it times the price. Taking a look at the financials for Icon. All right, we've got two years here. We've got 2022 where they were doing $7.2 million. We know it's millions because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on these charts. 2023, she dropped pretty hard, just shy of 3 million. Ended up with 4.4 and they got to keep a little more than 50% of that as profit. Taking a look at the balance sheet for the company, cash and cash equivalents, what I like to think of as the bank account. They got 2.7 million there. Total assets as of 2023, about 13 million. Total liabilities, about 4 million. So we are just over $9 million positive stockholder equity. So we've got stockholder equity. We do have revenues. We just read the news that the revenues, the profits, the margins, all of it is growing right now. So everything is dandy on the financial fundamental side of things. Taking a look at our disclosures. We got a bunch of them here. I did dive into these. This 424B3 and this one as well. This 6K, that's 6K. All of these had to do with the news we just looked at. So there really isn't anything new since they came on the market to consider. So that's what you got here, folks. You got a stock that just came onto the market, fell about 30%, is bouncing right now, as you're going to see when we go look at the charts. She's giving away a dividend now, $0.08, cents, which is a pretty nice size dividend, actually. They've got money coming in. They just bought a new vessel. I mean, everything is looking good, right? You haven't seen the chart yet. Well, take my word for it. Nah, forget about taking my word for it. Let's go look at it and you can see for yourself. We got ticker ICON all locked and loaded and ready to go on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We are looking at Icon Energy on a six-month, four-hour view, which is the entire chart for the company right now. She came on the market July 12th. She came on at roughly three bucks, hit a high that day of 385, and then just started to dribble downhill. August 1st, she started dropping fast. August 22nd, she hit her ultimate low of $2.03. Off of that, she started going sideways, and then right here, she had a breakout. Look at the size of that bar. She got excited when she went over that 20, jumping from $2.14 up to $2.57 in one big bolt. Fell back on top of the 20, bounced up and threw that 50 all the way up to $3, and then came back down. Right now, we are sitting at around 246, just underneath the 50, which is the boss MA right now. We don't have a 200 day on the chart. Now let's grab an SNR while we're here. I'm going to get most of these from the hourly chart, but I'm going to grab this high one here. We can see all of this is bouncing on it over and over again. So I'm snagging that one before we leave. Volume, not a whole lot to get excited about here, regular volume. But <laughs> when you've only got 1.4 million shares in a float, you don't need a lot of volume to get the thing moving. Osculators, our PPO is starting to come up, our MACD is starting to climb, RSI is still falling. The four-hour chart is a little cool right now, but it has shown us a lot of potential. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. This is where I'm going to get my s and R. so let's grab those right now. Supports and resistances, we need them so we know where to get into a trade and where to get out. Underneath these is our exits this is when the price is going to slow down and on top is where we get in that's where it starts to speed up and climb about right there maybe and then we definitely got one down here at the bottom and we i know we've got one here in the middle it's a little thin to find but i'm looking at about that right there and we probably got a softer one up in this region yeah but i'm not going to draw it there that's close enough okay so we're in a downtrend here we're underneath the 50. She comes down to the low bubble. She bounces off of it, gets on top of her nine, crosses the 20, lots of excitement on her hourly chart, and it isn't stopping. She's getting big bars, bouncing off of that nine, climbing, climbing. Then right here, we get a super bar going from 237 up to 299, and then she fell all the way back to our 20. That doesn't scare me at all, folks. I expect her to come down. Now, I'll tell you what I'm a little bummed about here. Looking at this chart, 
we've got a new 200-day MA that just came on the board. If you watch my videos regularly, I say this over and over again. I have noticed when a new MA comes onto the board, they're always bigger, normally the price will gravitate to it. Just get sucked in. Doesn't matter if the price is above it or below it. It goes to that new MA in most circumstances. Sometimes it gets magnetized and sticks. Other times it's like tag wrestling. They just touch it and go back to whatever it was they were doing. Well, that's kind of what it looks like now. Looks like it tagged it and came back to what it was doing. And it's landed firmly on the 20, which you can see when she gets on top of, she's very excited. So she is stuck at a point of importance to her. Now, normally, I would say that that would be a catalyst for us. I was thinking that at 2 o'clock this afternoon before this happened because it would bounce just like that, and I was expecting that, but it's already happened. Does that mean the run's over? No, 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 no. This is just a verification that we're thinking right. She is excited about climbing. She's got all these big bars pushing through the biggest MAs on the board. Now we've got a new MA. She just poked through it for the first time. She's come down to the 20, and I think she's going to launch. Look at all the volume that came in at the very end of the day. Now, that big bar right there did hurt. Look at our oscillators. Every single one of them is coming down hard and fast right now. Not a pretty picture. But if we look just before that bar, everything was climbing and looking very good. So that's just one bar. Let's come on down to our, let's check out the five day, 15 minute. Oh, look at that folks. Beautiful. So we have a downtrend here. Our 200 day SMA is falling fast and furious. Right in this area where she's starting to break out, she starts going flat right now. Our 200-day MA is flat. This is when you get your breakouts 9 out of 10 times when it finally gets flat. If the price tries to get up on top of a 200 that's coming downhill, think of that hill as having ice. They can get up over it, but if they try to stand up and stay there, they're going to slip and fall and come way down probably further than where they started from. So all you can do is really poke your hand up over it and wave. I'm going to climb. And we look at those as signals. Here she took off just as she was starting to go flat. And right when she went flat, we had our biggest bounce. She's come back down. She's now on top of her 200 haul, which is definitely climbing. All of our SMAs are climbing, going across our 200 right now. Yes, that one big bar is turning everything down right now, but it is just one bar. Take a look now at our five-day, five-minute. Looks just as ugly. <laughs> it's not ugly. I just don't like that big bar. This bar looks real scary on the five-minute, doesn't it? It came through every single SMA all the way through the 200 as a solid bar. I'm not liking that. But look at our 200. It is completely flat and actually starting to climb now. All of our oscillators are ugly because, again, that one big bar there screwed everything up. Wasn't here when I started doing all of this, folks. But the bottom line is I like Icon. She's in recovery right now. I think she could easily get to $3. As she's already showing you, she has intention to jump up there. Our 200 just came into the picture. It's up at the $3 mark. She likes to make these big bounces through the strong SMAs. Now that we got a new one, she could start getting big bounces through there. Now her high is 385. Is it possible to hit that? Sure it is. Could she go past it? She could. I really don't know. All I know, folks, is as a day trader, I am looking to take gains between these supports and resistances. These are my plays. I get in on top of a support when it starts to push up. You know, right here, it starts to push up, you get in. Slows down up here, you may want to sell. She jumps up to the next one, you want to get in down here on top just above when she's launching, when the plane gets its wheels off the runway and she starts to fly and you want to sell as she's rising because when she hits her head, she can fall back really, really fast. I'm like an icon. We don't have a whole lot of chart to look at, but the chart looks hot on a lot of different time frames. We've got a dividend coming out. They got lots of money to play with. They've got a sneak peek on their revenues coming out. We know they're all good. What's not to like? But of course, do some more due diligence. That never hurts. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.